边跑。<笑>好啦，我將房網後邊誒、呃、TV 嘅朋友嚇。O K， 唔該曬。大家好，我係港鐵公司事務總監蘇家碧。首先歡迎大家出席今日港鐵公司二零一八年年度業績報告嘅記者會。首先，我想介紹一下今日出席嘅港鐵代表。坐喺台中間嘅係我哋行政總裁梁國權先生，而坐喺梁先生右手邊係常務總監、車務及中國內地事務金澤培博士，同埋物業總監鄧志輝先生。而坐喺梁先生嘅左手邊係我哋財務總監許亮華先生，仲有商務總監楊美珍女士，同埋我哋嘅車務總監劉千晴先生。今日我哋嘅記者會咧係會以英文為主嘅，我哋現場亦都有提供即時嘅傳譯。咁如果大家有需要嘅話咧，可以向我哋同事咧攞翻個即時傳譯嘅誒耳機嘅。首先，梁先生會以中文。概述一下港鐵公司二零一八年嘅業績，然後咧就會以英文做一個詳細嘅報告，然後許亮華先生咧會作一個財務嘅簡介，跟住我哋會回答大家嘅問題嘅。我將時間交俾 Linkin。啊，唔該曬 Linda， 各位傳媒朋友大家好，歡迎大家今日出席港鐵公司二零一八年業績發佈會。大家都知道今次係我最後一次主持港鐵公司嘅業績發佈會。我喺度啊，用呢個機會啊，多謝大家咁多位過去多年對我嘅大力支持同包容。港鐵公司嘅營運咧，今年已經踏入第四十年，多謝所有同事付出嘅努力，令到公司嘅業務走向多元化。除咗鐵路服務，喺物業、商務，以至喺中國內地同海外啊，都有好好嘅發展。我喺港鐵公司服務咗十七年，依十幾年來啊，我見證啊，我見證住公司嘅發展。港鐵係香港喺香港載客量由十七年前每日二百一十萬人次啊，上升到今日嘅五百九十萬人次。咁繁忙嘅系統仍然保持到百分之九啊九點九嘅高水平服務啊。同時咧喺背後啊付出咗好大嘅努力，而兩次合併啊，亦都令到我哋可以為市民提供更好嘅鐵路服務。港鐵啊過去十七年啦，開通咗多條新鐵路線，將鐵路服務啊帶到去全港十八區。舊年咧更開通咗連接內地嘅高鐵服務，同時啊。透過鐵路加物業發展模式啊，港鐵亦喺過去十七年啦，為香港提供五萬七千個居所，令到依啲家庭啊可以安居。港鐵喺海外亦有好好嘅發展。經過咁多年努力啊，目前啦喺八個香港以外嘅城市啊，參與鐵路營運，每日啊服務超過六百八十萬人乘客。我將會喺四月一號啊退休。我想借今日依個機會，多謝四萬七千位喺香港同海外用心服務乘客嘅同事。喺過去依十七年，
我能夠與各位共事啊，係我嘅榮幸，我以你哋為驕傲。政府啱啱公布咗委任歐陽先生喺今年七月接任港鐵公司主席，公司歡迎政府依個任命。我亦想用依個機會啊，歡迎下一任行政總裁。公司而家面對住一啲挑戰，但同時咧亦有唔少嘅機會。Jacob 有好多年嘅經驗，亦係非常專業，必定能夠帶領公司更上一層樓，同公司所有同事一齊努力，為我哋嘅顧客提供更優秀、更優質嘅服務。Jacob， 恭喜！而家我。回顧回顧一下二零一八年，依一年咧可以話係最大挑戰嘅一年。近期咧，大家對沙中線啊，尤其係紅磡站擴建工程嘅質量咧，同埋建造記錄咧，十分關注。政府委任嘅調查委員會最近咧就紅磡站擴建工程月台啊層板嘅結構安全同埋項目管理啊。向政府提交咗中期報告。當報告啊，當報告啊公開之後咧，公司會研究報告嘅內容同相關嘅建議。我哋會繼續配合調查委員會進一步嘅工作，並根據啊同政府協定好嘅方法啊，核實紅磡站擴建工程嘅結構完整性同埋安全。挽回公眾嘅信心，同時咧繼續推展沙中線工程。港鐵嘅企業文化，其中一個重要元素啊，係不斷改善。我哋會繼續聆聽社會大眾嘅意見，努力改善，盡力達到社會不斷提高嘅期望。喺努力克服挑戰嘅同時咧。我亦希望回顧一下港鐵上上下下每一位同事喺過去一年同心協力取得嘅成果。喺二零一八年咧，雖然列車班次同乘客量都再創新高，但喺有賴同事嘅努力同埋乘客嘅配合啊，整體啊乘客車程準時度仍然能夠維持喺百分之九啊九點九嘅世界級水平。喺一月至九月，更加係合併以嚟最好頭三季，以全年計啊，合併啊喺喺合併以嚟啊第二佳嘅成績，主要係發生啊咗十月十六號嘅事故，當日啊確實有唔少乘客啊受到影響，我喺度啊再一次向受影響嘅乘客致歉，而。依宗事故對我哋嘅整體表演，亦帶來啊帶來咗比較大嘅影響。事實上咧，每次當出現啊一啲比較長嘅延誤啊，令到乘客受影響啦，我哋都會揾出事故嘅原因，努力避免同樣事故再發生。同時，我哋亦會繼續投放大量資源喺維修、保養同更新資產。而提供安全可靠嘅服務。舊年咧，我哋喺依方面咧就投入咗九十億港元。喺鐵路二點零喺過去四年半咧，我哋已經完成咗四個新鐵路項目，包括喺舊年九月廿三號通車嘅高鐵香港段。依個係一個新嘅里程碑，為旅客提供快捷舒適嘅服務，並將香港連接到國家。嘅高鐵網絡，我好高興見到高鐵香港段越嚟越受大家歡迎。喺今年嘅第啊年初三啊，高鐵香港段嘅乘客人數啊錄得超過十萬人次，喺高鐵通車以來啊，單日啊最高嘅客量紀錄。整體嚟講咧，喺香港經濟增長嘅帶動下，我哋嘅香港客運業務啊～有百分之二點二嘅乘客量增長。至於鐵路發展策略二零一四未來嘅七個項目，港鐵公司應政府嘅邀請，已經提交咗
其中五個項目嘅建議書，分別係屯門南延線、北環線、東九龍線、東湧西延線同埋北港島線。物業發展方面咧，我哋推出咗日出康城第五期 Malibu 同埋第六期 LP 六嘅預售。另外，公司作為九江鐵路公司項目代理啊。舊年咧，亦推出咗西鐵物業發展項目 So City。至於其他幾個西鐵項目嘅預售，亦繼續。為咗滿足本港嘅啊房屋需求啊，我哋同合作發展夥伴咧，而家起緊嘅住宅單位啊，唔計西鐵物業啊，合共約二萬個單位。大部分咧，將會喺未來六年左右落成。物業招標方面，去年我哋批出咗三個項目，包括油塘通風樓項目、黃竹坑第三期同埋何文田站第二期。至於喺香港以外嘅鐵路項目咧，我哋而家平均每日服務超過六百八十萬人次嘅乘客。去年咧喺中國內地同國際業務方面咧，各地嘅項目咧亦有唔同嘅進展。雖然瑞典 Stockholm Commuter Rail 以及英國 South Western Railway 喺營運上面對一啲挑戰，但我哋其他業務嘅表現咧都合乎，甚至好過預期。喺英國 MTR Crossrail 已經開始喺倫敦營運機場同市區之間嘅一段鐵路。我哋喺舊年四月亦獲批澳門首條輕軌。系統嘅營運同埋維修合約，財務方面咧，我哋經常性業務利潤上升百分之五點一至九十億港元，物業發展税後利潤咧係二十二億港元，包括嚟自日出康城第四期嘅利潤入帳。因此，我哋喺二零一八年嘅基本業務利潤咧上升百分之七點一至一百一十三億港元。考慮曬公司嘅財務狀況啦，港鐵董事局建議末期普通股息為每股港幣九毫半，而全年普通股息咧為每股港幣一蚊兩毫子。二零一九年係我哋自一九七九年開始投入服務以來嘅四十週年，公司好榮幸可以喺過去四十年。同香港市民一同成長，為聯繫同建設社區作出貢獻。港鐵公司喺依四十年來啊，啊成功完成咗多個鐵路項目，每日咧都為廣大嘅市民啦提供安全可靠嘅服務。我想強調，公司一向以確保鐵路項目嘅安全同質量啦為首要原則，絕不妥協。公司所有嘅同事都啊上下一心，致力为香港市民服务。未来啊，我深信公司会继续不断改进，尽心尽力为市民提供安全、可靠嘅服务。多谢各位。I will now continue in English. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining our 2018 annual results. As MTR prepares to celebrate our 40th anniversary, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all our colleagues for their hard work in building the company's thriving businesses in Hong Kong, mainland of China, as well as overseas. I've been with the company for the past 17 years, during which I have witnessed a number of significant achievements. Here in Hong Kong, over this period, our weekday patronage has increased from 2.1 million to 5.9 million, whilst maintaining train service delivery at a world-class level of 99.9%. At the same time, our rail network in Hong Kong has expanded significantly through both the rail merger as well as the completion of a number of new rail lines, which have enabled MTR to serve passengers in all 18 districts in Hong Kong. All these are the result of the hard work, dedication, and professionalism of our colleagues, and also the support of all our stakeholders, and importantly, our passengers. 
The last 17 years also saw significant development in our rail and property model with over 57,000 residential apartments delivered into the market, contributing to the supply of convenient housing for Hong Kong people. We've also leveraged our expertise and experience to expand overseas, and we now operate in eight cities outside Hong Kong, carrying over 6.8 million passengers every weekday. Indeed, more passengers than we carry here in Hong Kong. As I retire from the company on 1st April, I give very special thanks to all our 47,000 colleagues worldwide. It has been my honor to have worked with all of you. Our collective achievements are things which we should be all proud of. The government has just announced the appointment of Mr. Rex Aoyang as the new chairman of our board of directors, with effect from the 1st of July this year. The company welcomes Mr. Aoyang's appointment. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome our new CEO, Dr. Jacob Cam. The company faces a number of challenges, but there are lots of opportunities. Jacob is a very experienced professional and has already contributed significantly to MTR. He will lead the company to even greater heights. Let me now turn back to our 2018 results. In 2018, the company's financial and operational results for the year were satisfactory despite a number of challenges. Our recurrent profit increased by 5.1%, mainly due to steady patronage growth in Hong Kong, as well as higher contribution from station commercial businesses and property rental and management businesses. Our underlying profits increased by 7.1% due to the recurrent profit growth and the profit booking from Lois Park Package 4. Our overall operational performance was satisfactory. In Hong Kong, train service delivery and passenger journeys on time in our heavy rail network were maintained at 99.9 percent, whilst train frequency was increased further. In the period from January to September 2018, our train service, as measured by passenger journeys on time, was our best performance since the rail merger. However, this excellent overall performance was impacted by a major disruption impact affecting four lines caused by a signal system software fault in October of last year. We apologize to our passengers for this disruption and have taken further steps to enhance our systems. On 23rd of September 2018, we began operation of the Hong Kong section of the Guangzhou Sanjun Hong Kong High Speed Rail, opening a major new chapter for Hong Kong rail transport and its connection to the 29,000 kilometer long high speed rail network in the mainland of China. Our Hong Kong station commercial and property rental businesses achieve steady revenue and profit growth, benefiting from the recovery in the retail sector. Rental growth also benefited from the full year impact of the new retail space, as well as the new shops opened in the Hong Kong West Kowloon Station. In property tendering, we awarded three projects to developers last year. Outside Hong Kong, the performance of our rail businesses was mixed. We faced serious challenges in our Stockholm commuter rail in Sweden and the Southwestern Rail franchise in the UK. However, the other businesses performed either in line with or above our expectations. In our growth strategy in Hong Kong under Rail Gen 2.0, our fifth rail project, the Shard Inter Central Link, has faced a number of allegations concerning workmanship and timely reporting on certain construction matters, which raise a considerable amount of public concerns. We have engaged an external consultant as well as undertaken internal reviews to strengthen our project reporting and processes, and have taken and have given our full cooperation to the Commission of Inquiry, whose work is still ongoing. We have submitted proposals for five new rail projects here in Hong Kong under RDS 2014, and we look forward to receiving the invitation from government for proposals for the remaining two projects. Also in Hong Kong, with our development partners, we have about 20,000 residential units currently under construction, the majority of which will be delivered into the market over the next six years or so. And in our property rental businesses, we will add three new shopping centers to our portfolio during the coming years, enlarging our existing portfolio by 49% in terms of gross floor area. Outside Hong Kong, in the United Kingdom, we've submitted our bid for the West Coast Partnership franchise. And in Australia, we have signed the contract finalization deed for Sydney Metro City and Southwest, whilst also pursuing opportunities in different cities in the mainland of China and overseas. 
Now, let me highlight our financial results for 2018. In Hong Kong, revenue from our recurrent businesses increased by 5.6% to Hong Kong dollar 33 billion, with recurrent profit increasing by 7% to 8.2 billion. Outside of Hong Kong, revenue from our recurrent businesses increased by 21.4% to just under $21 billion. Recurrent profit outside of Hong Kong decreased by 10.3% to $823 million, mainly due to the losses from MTR Pendertagen in Sweden, which was offset by the higher contributions from Beijing and Melbourne, as well as the first-time profitability of our Hangzhou businesses. As a result, our total recurrent profits increased by 5.1% to just over $9 billion. With property development profit after tax of $2.2 billion, profit from underlying businesses increased by 7.1% to $11.3 billion Hong Kong dollars, and our underlying earnings per share was up 5.1% to $1.86. The MTR board has proposed a final ordinary dividend of Hong Kong 95 cents per share resulting in a full-year ordinary dividend of Hong Kong dollar 120 per share, an increase of 7.1% compared to the prior year. In our transportation business here in Hong Kong, last year, total patronage from all of our transport businesses here increased by 2.2% to 2.04 billion passenger trips. Today, 5.9 million passenger trips are made each weekday across all of our services here in Hong Kong. Revenue increased by 7.1% to $19.5 billion, mainly due to patronage growth, contribution from the recently opened high-speed rail, and fare adjustment under the fare adjustment mechanism. Operating costs increased by 5.5% to $11.3 billion, mainly driven by higher operating costs after the opening of the high-speed rail. Depreciation, amortization, and variable annual payment to KCRC increased by 6.3%, to $6.2 billion. As a result, EBITDA and EBIT margin rose by 0.8 and 1.1 percentage points to 41.9% and 10.2% respectively. Looking at our individual transport services for the domestic service, fare revenue increased by 3.1% with patronage growth of 2%. Our patronage benefited from the solid economic growth in Hong Kong for much of 2018. Average fares increased by 1.1% as a result of the implementation of fare adjustment under the FAM in June 2018, which were partly offset by various fare concessions offered during the year. For the cross-boundary service, fare revenue increased by 6% and patronage increased by 4.4% with continuous strong growth in mainland visitors. For our airport express service, fare revenue increased by 7.4% with patronage up 6.5% supported by an increase in air passenger traffic. In our Hong Kong transport services, we continue to provide a variety of concessions to our passengers. In 2018, in addition to our usual concessions of over 2.7 billion, we also offered concessions and promotions of a further 500 million, resulting in total concessions of 3.2 billion Hong Kong dollars for our passengers. The opening of high-speed rail services provide fast, convenient, and comfortable connections to 44 mainland stations directly without interchanging, providing passengers with an excellent travel choice for leisure or business. Between the 23rd of September, when the high-speed rail Hong Kong section opened, and the end of last year, total passengers on the high-speed rail was 5.3 million. With the increase in mainland visitor arrivals and the continual patronage buildup from the two new lines open in the second half of 2016, MTR's share of the total franchise public transport market in Hong Kong increased by 0.2 percentage points to 49.3% in 2018. MTR's cross-boundary market share increased from 50.8% to 52.1%, partly benefiting from the opening of the high-speed rail. Our market share of journeys to and from the airport rose from 21.5% to 22% due to enhanced promotional activities. Now, I would turn to our Hong Kong station commercial businesses, where revenue last year increased by 8.1% to $6.5 billion. Advertising revenue increased by 13.2% to 
help by the improved retail and tourism markets. The additional advertising units at Hong Kong West Kowloon Station also contributed to the growth. Station retail revenue rose by 6.8%, mainly due to positive rental reversion and our ongoing trade mix uh, enhancement. Higher rental at duty-free shops, as well as 35 new shops at Hong Kong West Kowloon Station, also contributed to the increase. Revenue from telecom increased by 9.6%, mainly due to incremental revenue from new service contracts and capacity enhancement projects. Overall, operating expenses of our station commercial businesses increased by 13.2%, mainly due to the higher agency costs associated with the advertising revenue growth. After depreciation and increased variable payment to KCRC, earnings before interest and taxes increased by 6.4% to $5 billion, with EBIT margin standing at 78%. Now turning to our Hong Kong property business, revenue from our Hong Kong property rental and management businesses increased by 3.2% to 5.1 billion Hong Kong dollars due to positive rental reversion and the full year impact of the new retail space opened in 2017. Our shopping malls in Hong Kong achieved a positive 1.5% rental reversion during 2018. Occupancy rates were close to 100% at both our shopping malls and the 18 floors in 2 IFC. The grand opening of Maritime Square 2 was held in February 2018. The ground floor of Maritime Square 1 was renovated during the year and progressively opened from October last year. The introduction of the sports and well-being zone and other entertainment anchors has successfully repositioned Paradise Mall, leading to improved sales, turnover, and footfall. Elements also benefited from the opening of the high-speed rail. After depreciation and variable annual payment to KCRC, earnings before interest and taxes rose by 3.5% to $4.2 billion. In our Hong Kong property development business, pre-tax profits from this area of our business was $2.6 billion, mainly from the booking of profits from Wings at C and Wings at C2. Sales of car parking spaces as well as surplus proceeds released from completed property development projects. In our property tendering activities, we awarded three MTR projects in 2018, providing a total of 2,700 residential units. In May, we awarded Yautan Ventilation Building Site to a consortium comprising Sino Land and CSI Properties. In August, we awarded Wanjuk Hang Station Package 3 to CK Asset. And in October, we awarded Hormantin Station Package 2 to China Cam Group. Last year, pre-sales were launched for Malibu and LP6 of Lois Park in March and September. Acting as agent for KCRC, pre-sales were also launched for So City in October last year, all of which were well, well received by the market. Turning to our growth initiatives in Hong Kong, our Hong Kong Rail Network covers 257 kilometers, and there is now one remaining rail project under construction, namely the Sha Tin to Central Link. In mid-2018, there were allegations concerning workmanship and timely reporting of certain construction matters relating to three stations of the Sha Tin to Central Link, in particular regarding works at Hong Kong Station Extension. The company has taken immediate steps to investigate the issues, report the company's findings to government, and reserve our position against relevant contractors. To address the allegations relating to the platform at the Hong Kong extension, the company has submitted to government a holistic proposal for the verification and assurance of the as constructed conditions and workmanship quality of the Hong Kong station extension. Verification and assurance works are still in progress, which will be followed by an assessment of the overall structural integrity and safety of the station extension. The company has also fully cooperated with the Commission of Inquiry, which was set up by the HKSAR Chief Executive and Council to investigate matters relating to the diaphragm war and the platform slabs at Hong Kong Station Extension. On 19th of February 2019 this year, government announced the terms of reference of the Commission of Inquiry has been expanded to cover issues relating to two connecting structures and the stabling siding at the Hong Kong Station Extension. On 25th February this year, the Commission of Inquiry submitted an interim report on its findings and recommendations on matters covered by the original terms of reference. Government has yet to publish the interim report. In the meantime, 
we have taken immediate measures to strengthen monitoring and supervision over all shut into central link contracts. The Capital Works Committee of the Board has also reviewed the company's project management processes and procedures, assisted by an external consultant, and has made recommendations for improvements, many of which have already been implemented. In terms of overall progress, outside of further findings from those investigations and verification exercise, which I've just mentioned, the Chin Ma line of the Shatin to Central Link was 99.5% complete. Structural works for all stations have been substantially completed, and fitting out building services and electrical and mechanical works have been mostly completed. The Hong Kong to Admiralty section of the Shatin to Central Link was 75.7% complete at the end of last year. All the 11 immersed tube units of the Cross Harbour Tunnel have been installed in Victoria Harbour by April of last year. The main works of the Cross Harbour section continue. Connection works of the tunnel units at Causeway Bay Typhoon Shelter are in progress. At Exhibition Centre Station, construction progress have been affected by late site handover, incomplete and trusted works by other parties, and unfavourable ground conditions. Construction works for Exhibition Centre Station and relevant railway facilities continue with bulk excavation expected to complete in the first half of 2019. Under the entrustment agreement with government, Hong Kong government is responsible to, uh, for the funding of the relevant work for the Sha Tin to Central Link. In September 2017, we provided to government an updated estimated cost of 87.3 billion Hong Kong dollars relating to the construction works. The company intends to carry out a further review and revalidation of the cost to complete within 2019, taking account of the outcome of the verification and assurance works and the associated delays. The company continues to exercise rigorous cost control with the objective of ensuring that the construction costs are contained, are, uh, contained so far as possible. We have been requested by government to carry out a feasibility study on opening the Chin Moon line in phases. The study is still ongoing and hence the overall timetable for the opening of various sections of the Shatin Central Link is still under review. Beyond the Shatin Central Link, government has identified seven new rail projects under RDS 2014 to be implemented in phases. We have submitted project proposals for five of these projects. We are providing government with further information to resolve the technical, operational and financial issues to take these projects to the next stage. Government's strategic study on railway beyond 2030 envisage major transport corridors to meet the longer-term transport demand arising from Hong Kong 2030 plus and the Lantau Tomorrow Vision. These transport corridors will cover strategic growth areas in the new territories and major reclamations in the central waters. We are making good progress in the expansion of our shopping centre portfolio. Over the next four years or so, we will add over 150,000 square metres of gross floor area to our retail portfolio increasing a trivial GFA by 49%. The shopping center at Lois Park was 50% complete, and the project remains on target for completion by the second half of 2020. The foundation works of the Dai Wai shopping center are progressing slower than planned. This is due to the measures required to address ground settlement at a localized area of the East Rail platform. The project was 20% complete as at the end of last year, and the targeted project completion is now 2023. The shopping center at Wanchuk Hong Station is progressing well, and the project, project is targeted for completion by the end of 2023. In residential property development, we had tendered out 15 MTR development packages over the past five years. With Lowest Park Package 4 having received its occupation permit at the end of last year, 14 projects remain under various stages of development with a total GFA of 1.22 million square meters. These 14 projects can provide about 20,000 residential units. These developments are expected to be completed over the next six years or so. We're also exploring with government how best to advance the plans for the Suho Wan depot site, which may be developed into a community comprising 14,000 public and private housing units. The outlined zoning plan was approved on 12th of February this year. Outside of Hong Kong, our rail business carried an average of 6.8 million passengers every weekday. Recurrent profit from our main and China businesses increased by 63% to 657 million Hong Kong dollars. 
profits from our Macau business was $151 million, a three-fold increase from the previous year, mainly due to the profit recognition from project management. Our European businesses suffered a loss of $198 million, mainly due to losses incurred by MTR Pendletog in Sweden. Profit from Australia decreased 12% to $213 million, with a drop in profit from project delivery of Sydney Metro Northwest, which was partly offset by the improved overall margins at MTM after the renewal of the franchise agreement. In mainland of China, property development net profits after tax was $19 million, a significant decline from 2017 when the bulk of the profits from Tiara was booked. In Beijing, our 49% associate Beijing MTR operates four lines, namely Beijing Metro Line 4, the Dasing Line, Line 14, and Line 16. Both operational and financial performances were ahead of our expectation. In 2018, these lines carried 2.18 million passenger trips every weekday, a 4.2% increase from the previous year. Profit contribution to MTR increased by 21.5% to $435 million. In Sanjun, patronage at our Sanjun Metro Line 4 increased by 10.8% to $232 million, with average weekday patronage reaching 643,000 passengers. Profit contribution to MTR increased by 74.5% to $171 million, led by the strong patronage growth. As previously forewarned, if there's no fair increase in Sunjun in the near future, the financial viability of our Sunjun subsidiary may be impacted. In Hangzhou, patronage at Hangzhou Metro Line 1 increased by 19.4% to $269 million, with an average weekday patronage of 749000 in 2018. Support, supported by the growth in patronage, our share of profit from Hangzhou MTR in 2018 amounted to $35 million as compared to a loss of $68 million in 2017. This is the first year of profitability for Hangzhou MTR. Construction works at Hangzhou Metro Line 1, Line 5 are in progress, and the line is targeted to open in 2019. In the Great, Greater Bay Area in Tsingdut, we are providing TOD technical assistance to, assistance to Country Garden and Tsingdut Metro for a mixed-use property development project adjacent to Tsingdut uh, Cheng Station, with a total GFA of approximately 391,500 square meters. We'll continue to explore similar opportunities in other cities in the mainland of China. In Macau, apart from the technical consultancy pro, uh, support, which we've been providing on the Macau Light Rapid Transit uh, Taipa line, we'll, we were awarded a Macau Pataka 5.88 billion o and contract in April 2018. The contract covers an 80-month service period. Contribution to MTR last year was $151 million, up from $38 million in 2017. In Europe, our financial performance was affected by various factors, predominantly at MTR Pendletog, where a lack of drivers, inadequate train availability, complex timetable changes, and poorly performing infrastructure significantly impacted performance. We also faced difficulties in our Southwestern Rail franchise in the UK, including industry-wide slowdown in passenger growth and industrial actions. In Australia, in Melbourne, the renewed concession to operate the Melbourne Metro network continued to deliver high service levels. In Sydney, for Sydney Metro Northwest, all track laying works have been completed and construction progress for the depot and stations, as well as pre-operational planning, are progressing. Train testing is underway with target opening of this line in the middle of the year. Turning to our growth initiatives outside Hong Kong, we continue to pursue rail and transit-oriented development opportunities in various cities in the mainland of China, including uh, Beijing, Hangzhou, and Chengdu. Moving to our overseas growth initiatives in the UK, together with an associated company, China Rail Corporation, uh, an associated company of China Rail Corporation, we submitted a bid for the West Coast Partnership franchise in July of last year, followed by a second round bid submission in November of last year. This is a 13-year franchise providing rail services on the West Coast Main Line from 2019 until 2031. In Australia, we continue to pursue potential opportunity to participate in Sydney Metro City and Southwest, an extension of Sydney Metro Northwest. We're part of the consortium which had entered the contract finalization deed with Sydney Metro in December 2018, and will provide Sydney Metro with a final updated augmentation proposal by the middle of this year. 
Target opening of the line is 2024. Finally, in Canada, together with a partner, we have submitted a pre-qualification bid to bid for the Toronto Regional Express Rail. With that, I now turn the time over to Herbert. Okay, thank you, Lincoln. Uh, in 2018, our total revenue was down 2.7% from last year to $53.9 billion. However, if we exclude mainland China property development revenue, total revenue was up 11.2% to $53.9 billion on the back of growth in overseas and domestic fair revenue. Profit from underlying businesses was $11.3 billion. This year, the investment property revaluation gain was a result of a slight yield compression in some of our shopping malls and higher reversionary rentals in offices and certain shopping malls. Let's turn to the profit contributions from our different business segments. In Hong Kong, EBIT, that's earnings before interest and tax, of our transport operations was up 20% mainly due to an extra lump sum award provided in 2017, as well as improvement in operational efficiency. Our station commercial and property rental and management businesses were up 6.4% and 3.5% respectively. Outside of Hong Kong, mainland of China international recurrent businesses was up 1.5% from last year, mainly due to higher contribution from Beijing MTR and the recording of our first profit from Hangzhou, offset by the loss in Sweden. Our after-tax recurrent profit was up 5.1% to just over $9 billion. With after-tax property development profit at $2.2 billion, profit from underlying businesses was up 7.1% to $11.3 billion. Moving on to our consolidated statement of financial position. Total asset increased to $275 billion, $11 billion increased from last year, mainly due to the revaluation gain in investment properties and the increase in receivables arising from profit recognition from Wings at C and Wings at C2. Total liabilities decreased by $3 billion to $94 billion, mainly due to land premium payment and net repayment of borrowings. As such, total equity increased by $14 billion to $181 billion. Moving on to our cash flow, our, total, our operating activities generated $10.9 billion inflow. Receipts from property development were $4.2 billion, mainly from proceeds and agency fees relating to various property development projects. The maintenance capex for existing assets, including railway and property assets in Hong Kong for seas, was $6 billion. Fixed and variable annual payments to KCRC was $2.7 billion. Investments in associate and joint venture were $1.8 billion. And after net repayment of borrowings of $1.6 billion, a net cash inflow was $203 million. On our financing and credit ratios with the repayment of loans, as mentioned before, our total group borrowings decreased to $40 billion with an average fixed debt maturity of $15.2 billion. Average borrowing costs increased to 2.8% from 2.5% last year, mainly due to uh, the year before, mainly due to higher interest rates on floating rate borrowings and also higher proportion of fixed rate borrowings, which carry high interest rate. Net debt to equity ratio, it decreased to 18.1% from a pro forma 23.7% the year before, and our interest cover was reduced to 13.6 times. On our three-year capex plan, total capex from 2019 to 2021 is $46.7 billion, of which 54% for the maintenance of existing Hong Kong railway assets, 13% for new Hong Kong railway projects, 10% for mainland of China and overseas, and 23% for Hong Kong property. After solid economic growth for much of 2018, and a rebound in retail and tourism sectors in Hong Kong, the picture appears less clear going into 2019. In particular, there are uncertainties over US interest rates and slowing global growth, as well as geopolitical tensions, all of which will affect Hong Kong. The outlook of our station commercial and property rental businesses will be subject to market conditions, 
though partly moderated by the stable rental structure in the typical three-year tenancy cycle. Outside of Hong Kong, our businesses should continue to perform reasonably well overall. However, we are still working to overcome the challenges in Europe faced by Stockholm Commuter Rail, MTR Express, and the Southwestern uh, Railway franchises. During 2019, we expect to open three more lines, namely Sydney Metro Northwest, Macau Light Rapid Transit Type Line, and Hangzhou Line 5. However, there are these are not expected to make a material financial contribution in 2019. In our property development businesses, the booking of profit for Malibu and at Lohas Park Package 5 and Lohas Park Shopping Centre is now dependent on the construction progress. And subject to market conditions, we aim to tender out three more property development projects over the next 12 months or so. Namely, Lohas Park Packages 11 and 12, as well as the fourth package at Wang Zhukhang Station. These packages are expected to provide about 4,500 residential units in total. In terms of property sales, we expect to commence pre-sale of Lohas Park Package 7 in the first half of 2019. And that completes our presentation. Thank you. Hello,请上发问的朋友先举手,我会逐个点大家 那個沙中線的問題,你會怎樣處理去搞得掂,有沒有信心去處理到呢? 我也看到你們在新聞稿也說會在今年會對沙中線的造價做進一步評估和重新確認 Perhaps I could just say a few words before Jacob answers uh, firstly, we are at MTR. It is really a we are very honoured that Jacob is taking on this role as the incoming chief executive officer. Uh, as you know, the board has established a selection committee, which has looked globally, worldwide, to find the most suitable candidate. There were a number of candidates. A number of candidates on a global basis were interviewed. Jacob was the most appropriate candidate, and the board today, this morning, confirmed Jacob's appointment as the next CEO, Chief Executive Officer of MTR. Jacob, as you all know, has extensive, and I would say extensive experience at MTR. He is well respected by all our colleagues in MTR. Jacob has been in senior leadership role in MTR for many years, and have significant achievement. Not least of these achievements is the very high standard of operations that we and our colleagues under Jacob and AD's leadership have maintained here in Hong Kong. So I would say that Jake and Jacob, we have a colleague who is very professional, who is very hardworking, who is very dedicated, and I believe it is truly MTR's uh, honor that Jacob is taking on this very important role to lead the 47,000 MTR colleagues around the world to even greater heights. Jacob, uh, uh, thank you, Lincoln, for your kind words. I want to thank the President of 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 the 好好地服務我們的觀眾和我們的顧客 
港鐵嘅團隊，我哋會竭盡所能，亦都希望得到各界嘅認同同埋支持，誒、呃、令到港鐵咧係可以再闖高峰。頭先你問第二個問題就係關於票價，咁你啊大家知道啊，講我哋有個票價調整機制，咁我哋要按照呢個票價調整機制嘅做法嘅。咁呢個票價調整機制咧，有啊啲數據咧都未出曬，咁去到今月今今個月底三月底啊，至啊有曬嗰啲數據，咁要等到三月底。啊，咁你啊第三個問題咧就係、是、關於沙中線嘅啊造價估算。啊，咁大家都知道喺二零一七年底，我哋嗰陣時交咗個啊造價估算俾政府。咁我哋啊喺過去依啊依段時間啦，我哋而家日後咧再會做啊多個造價估算。咁我哋啊要做完呢個造價估算，先至啊再可以交呢個估算俾政府。好，有冇其他問題？好，左手邊第二行 S E M P Candice。Hi Lincoln, you served uh, the MTR for uh, uh, for 17 years, and uh, during this period, do you have any regrets about <laughs> about um, yeah about your 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 service in the MTR? And how do you advise? Uh, do you have any tips for J uh, Jacob uh, to ride out this uh, management storm um, that are facing the MTR? Uh, no, uh, Candice, you know, thank you for your question and really thank you for your support over these many years. I would firstly say that it really has been an honor and a privilege to have worked with MTR over these last 17 years. Uh, these last 17 years have been in many ways extremely, extremely rewarding for me. Uh, in the 17 years, I have witnessed a number of significant events not least of which was the merger of the two rail lines now over 10 years ago. Whilst at the same time, uh, over the last 17 years, MTR has built and developed many new rail lines in Hong Kong to the extent that today we operate in all 18 districts here in Hong Kong. Every day, uh, our colleagues serve 5.9 million passengers. Last year, it was over 2 billion passengers that were served. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all our stakeholders, importantly our colleagues, our 47 thousand colleagues, our passengers, our Hong Kong uh, residents, Hong Kong citizens, and importantly yourselves for your many years of support. And we also look forward to your continuing support over the future years. So uh, I, I would say that the looking at MTR, you know, once again, a number of milestones, hold on Leiting Bay, a number of milestones have been established beyond the ones that we just talked about. If one looks at the success and continued success of the rail and property model, where over the last 17 years, MTR has delivered 57,000 units. You got man single jita down way into the Hong Kong residential markets, really for the benefit of Hong Kong residents and Hong Kong citizens. And beyond that, over the last 17 years, MTR has also gone outside of Hong Kong to the extent that every day now, our colleagues outside of Hong Kong very dutifully serve 6.8 million passengers every day. So I think these are things that we at MTR uh, thank our stakeholders for, that our colleagues work hard for, and that our colleagues uh, should be very proud of. Oh, 
咁跟進翻嘅，就係、是、因為嗰個土地嗰度咧，因為而家政府都喺個土地儲備嗰度都誒、呃，即係開始 cut 緊啦。我就唔知喺 MTR 依邊咧，喺個土地嗰工，即係譬如你喺住宅嗰方面咧，先頭有講話四千五百個單位，咁今年嗰個情況出嗰、那個情況係點？係咪今年出曬咧？咁就同埋咧，即係會唔會再多啲？譬如喺小豪灣嗰方面啊，甚至乎喺其他嘅計劃嗰方面，係咪都會誒、呃、再著力做多啲，做多啲同埋加快嗰個進度？鄧總，唔該，你回答邊個問題？啊，多謝你呢個問題啊。咁啊，頭先咧，我哋都公布咗啦。喺未來呢十二個月咧，我哋係有三幅土地，係日出康城第十一期、第十二期，同埋黃竹坑第四期三個發展項目招標。咁啊，一如既往啦，我哋都要好睇市場嗰個情況啦。誒、呃，賣樓我哋嘅理唔理想啦？咁但係現階段個計劃咧，我哋係有四千。五百個工誒單位咧，喺未來呢十二個月咧，我哋又會推出嘅。咁關於小豪灣嗰度，其實咧就上個月都好開心啦，即係睇到行政長官喺行會咧都核實咗批准咗嗰個區域規劃誒計劃總綱圖，咁就進入咗一個誒、呃、都係比較重要嘅里程碑。咁啊，我哋都會繼續研究，因為呢個項目咧其實都非常之複雜。牽涉到搬遷好多現時較為複雜龐大嘅鐵路維修設施，同埋每一日咧佢個運作，咁所以咧我哋都要好小心研究。咁啊呢個項目咧或者都講少少啦，有一千萬平方尺啦，啊一共係有可以具備條件去興建一萬四千個單位。多謝。好，誒、呃、左手邊第三行第一個 Now TV。係你好 ，Now TV 記者啊，咁就想問翻沙中線先嘅，咁頭先都有行家提到啦，就係、是、會再進一步去去去評估個沙中線嘅造價啦。其實係咪即係預期個數會再上升咧？即係擔唔擔心超支然之後立法會就誒 veto 咗個撥款申請咧？然後就見到個 RISC 報告就仲未交啦，就話要延到去三月底。其實點解會有呢個 delay 出現咧？個進度而家去到點咧？當時誒、呃、港鐵話會復檢埋其他車站，有冇呢一啲類似嘅缺失？個進度又係點？暫時有冇發現到啲乜嘢咧？另外都想問翻阿、啊、金博士，係啦，咁啊想睇下你哋會點樣挽回翻公眾嘅信心？誒、uh, ，perhaps I can answer your your questions first. The as we mentioned, the with Shelton Central Link, ah、uh, the Cost estimate is subject to regular review, and we are in the process, as I mentioned before, of doing one of those regular reviews. We have previously, at the end of 2017, handed a cost estimate to government, but that was only an estimate, and those estimates are, of course, subject to、um, adjustments over the course of time. Secondly, I would say that,、uh, from Uh, from a transparency perspective, at every every quarter we report to Legco, to Legislative Council, with regards to the amount that has been spent to date, and、uh, these numbers are in the public domain. And of course,、um, uh, I would encourage you to go and、uh, look up these numbers in terms of the amount spent to date.、Uh, thirdly, with regards to your question on、uh, the information which We need to give to government. There, the Shelton Central Link and these contracts are very complex. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of work to be done to collect this information.、Uh, our colleagues are working very hard to collect the information as quickly as possible, as accurately as possible, and to hand over to government as soon as possible. We're doing our utmost to collect adequate as well as Uh, full information to government, and we would、uh, endeavour to hand that to government in a most timely manner. But I do stress that these contracts are very large; they are very complicated. There is a lot of documents, and therefore it does take time to collect all these documents. We also would like to get this handed over to government as soon as possible, as well. Uh, with regards to your last question to Jacob, before I hand it over to Jacob, I would say I have every confidence in Jacob, and 
I have every confidence that Jacob would lead the company to even greater heights and to uh, restore the trust of Hong Kong people as well as to continue to deliver on the very high quality service. Thank you. Um, you, you mentioned in, in your speech about uh, a feasibility study on the phased opening of the shot into Central Link. Uh, do you have uh, any idea when that feasibility study would be completed and when commuters might be able to use that line? And secondly, on the, XL, uh, the uh, Express Rail Link, the daily patronage in your report says uh, 53,000 passengers a day between September and December. Is that still below expectations? And uh, what can you do to improve that? Firstly, I would say that we, our objective, MTR's objective, is the same as our, tra our, our um, passengers as well as the Hong Kong public. We too would like to see, we too would want to see the Sha Tin Central Link, the so-called Chun Ma scene at this time, opened as soon as possible. So our objective is the same. Uh, we are, as highlighted and as government has indicated, Government has asked us to look at the possibility of what you mentioned as a partial opening, which is opening the Chin Ma scene in sections. This is a very complicated exercise because not surprisingly, when the line is planned to be opened in one go, to open it in sections, there are a lot of planning, a lot of uh, technical issues that needs to be examined and looked at. We have received that request from government to look at this opening in stages. We are, our colleagues continue to work very hard to come up with solutions and options for government. We are not at that position yet to come up with those final options and solutions because of the complexity, technical and otherwise. As soon as we have that, we would of course hand that to government. I would once again stress that our objective in, at MTR is the same as uh, Hong Kong residents, Hong Kong citizens, and our passengers. We too would very much like to see the line open really as quickly as possible. With regards to your second question on uh, the high speed rail, what used to be called the express rail link, you're absolutely right. Uh, highlighted in our report is that the average passenger number last year was 53,000 passengers every day. Uh, and as I said in my speech, 5.3 million passengers in the three plus months that the line was open for. Uh, I would say that these passenger numbers are in fact um, better than what we MTR had been anticipating. And therefore, um, in the, it's still early days for the high speed rail, but we have been very pleased with the results, both in terms of passenger numbers but also very pleased with the results in terms of the operations and the significant support which we have from China Rail Corporation. As you know, the high-speed rail line, Hong Kong section, uh, the majority of it is actually in the mainland of China, and uh, China Rail Corporation have been extremely supportive of our operations of that line. Um, Tilokadis 
sorry， 有一個 project 就淨係講緊話其實佢嘅財政嘅可行性長遠會受到影響。誒、呃，想問下點解其實集團仲想繼續喺英國同埋 Nordic region 繼續睇啲 project， 擔唔擔心其實 Toronto 嗰度都會重蹈覆轍咧？誒、呃，第三條問題就係想問翻，既然其實香港嘅事情都令到管理層用咗好多時間去。處理啦，海外擴展嘅進度會唔會慢翻落嚟？譬如話今年唔會再睇新嘅項目咁樣。Thank you。第一個問題關於內物業發展嘅，好啊，我先誒，或者我講一講我哋誒內地物業發展。誒，大家知道咧，實在我哋內地而家暫時嘅業務咧，主要啊都係誒鐵路為主嘅服務。咁當然啦，我哋都喺度開拓緊咧，係鐵路加物業。誒呢一個模式嘅發展，誒主要咧係配合誒城市嘅可持續發展。誒我哋主要咧係誒暫時咧，我哋淨係得誒喺深圳天眾嘅項目。咁天眾嘅項目咧，主要喺舊年二零一七年咧已經係大部分入帳。誒至於租務方面咧，亦都同樣啦。誒喺誒喺內地咧，呢個只係一個起步嘅階段。你第二個問題 ，with regards to your second question on MTR's businesses outside of Hong Kong, uh, in fact, uh, the, some of our businesses as has, as you mentioned, faced challenges. The one in the UK that you mentioned is South Western Railway, of which MTR is a 30% shareholder, and the other one that have faced difficulties, challenges, is our, business, our commuter rail business in Stockholm, MTR Pendletagen. Uh, a lot of work is being done at this time to uh, resolve the difficulties and get these businesses back on track. I will also say, however, that if you look at all the MTL businesses outside of Hong Kong as a portfolio, as a group, the businesses have done not too badly. In fact, uh, if one looks at profitability, last year in 2018, there was a drop but the businesses overall outside of Hong Kong still made over 800 million Hong Kong dollars. I think it was 823 million Hong Kong dollars. Uh, the, we are very prudent, or the whole sum sun, Thai sun ge hong We're very prudent in looking at new projects. And of course, when we look at these new projects, we'll take into account resources, both human resources and management resources as well as take into account the risk profile of these particular contracts. So overall, I would say that uh, our businesses outside of Hong Kong, they have had different results. Some, two of them, have faced challenges. However, the other businesses have performed in line with, in fact, most of the other businesses have performed better than what we had expected. So uh, going forward, of course, we will remain prudent in assessing new projects. 好，不如最後兩條問題好唔好啊？誒、um, ，第二行啊，畢嘉敏，明報。誒，你好啊，明報啊，有幾個問題。首先想問一問，即係嚟緊呢一年嗰、那個誒票價嗰個優惠嘅安排會係點啦？咁。另外就想問翻沙中線咧，其實嗰、那個誒、呃、最新嗰個造價預算係估計係幾時會做好啦？誒同埋而家暫時嗰個局部通車嗰個安排係研究成乜嘢階段？咁另外就係、是、即係最近都有啲專家報告就話，即係紅磡站改咗嗰、那個誒、呃、連續牆嘅結誒誒誒嗰個結構之後，就會有一啲潛在嘅結構問題啦。咁其實誒、呃、即係呢個問題係要點樣處理？其實紅磡站需唔需要話係誒拆咧？咁誒、呃、最後就係嗰、那個誒誒。呃作石屎嗰個核實嘅工作，咁其實暫停咗一段時間，幾時會可以重新開始翻？誒幾時會完成到咧？唔該。哇！首先你第一個問題啊，頭先你問關於票價啊，都啊都啊回答過，就係話我哋會根據依個票價調整機制啦。啊，咁優惠嚟講咧，我哋上次啊啊檢討依個票價調整機機制啊，都啊公布咗優惠係點處理啦。咁喺依度唔知 Jenny 有冇補充？咁誒、呃，好似即係啊梁總裁剛才講啦，其實我哋喺優惠方面咧，每年都有恆常，即係除咗講緊即係每年喺。誒、呃，即係檢討誒、呃，即係嗰個票價調整推出嘅時候，有一啲優惠咧，恆常都有誒、呃，即係二十七億啦。
。咁同埋我諗喺誒嗰個舊年誒啱啱推出咗啲新嘅優惠咧，就係、是、例如。喺誒全香港綠色小巴同港鐵轉乘嘅時候咧，我哋都推出咗所有線路有三毫子嘅優惠。咁依啲都係繼續會有喺度嘅。咁誒至於新嘅調整票價同埋跟住嘅安排咧，就喺遲啲三月尾嘅時候咧，即係會同大家再去即係誒公布。你第二個問題就沙中線啊造價估算啦。頭先都啊啊個依依個造價估算咧，我哋啊一路會一路睇緊。咁啊要啊。都要用少少時間，我哋而家冇一個啊確實嘅時間表，都要用少時間。啊，咁第你第三個普個普通車。哦，啊 ，face open face opening 嗰度啊 ，in terms of face opening 啊、uh, ，as I had、uh, mentioned、uh, previously， we we have received the request from government to look at a opening of stages。Uh, in opening of the Chinma line in stages, and we are continuing our study in terms of that phased opening.、Uh, we have to finish that study before we. It is a complicated process, and we're to finish that study before we can uh, uh, have any、uh, have any definitive、uh, comments with regards to either phase opening or otherwise. And I believe your last comment was with regards to the holistic assessment, what we call the holistic assessment.、Uh, we are still in stage two of that holistic assessment. We too would like to continue and complete the stage two assessment as quickly as possible. And as you know, right now there's a recalibration exercise ongoing with、uh, with the with advice from government with regards to this recalibration. Recalibration of the、uh, of the ultrasound、uh, measurement and the measuring technique. So as soon as that recalibration、uh, can be completed, we too would like to see a recommencement of the testing. 好，最後一條問題。啊，比如左手邊第三行中間係咪阿 Wendy 啊？黑色衫嗰位。誒管理層你好，經濟部 Andy。誒、呃、其實就想問翻咧，即係誒、呃、你哋都話即係沙中線嗰邊，其實都可能係做緊啲誒評估嘅工作啦。咁但係即係見到港鐵都係誒、呃、即係未就呢一個沙中線作任何嘅撥備啦。其實我想問翻，即係其實誒、呃、會係即係誒有咩嘅、呃、因素，或者係誒你哇，或者係要去到咩？會唔會話係因為誒項目超支，或者誒、呃、港鐵之後會承擔部分嘅責任嘅時候，港鐵先會考慮係會唔會作出誒、呃、個撥備啦？咁另外就想問翻誒。呃第二條就想問翻，因為都見到港鐵就話，即係經濟其實而家存在到誒都幾多不明朗因素啦。其實會唔會話擔心可能今年喺即係推出項目招標嗰度咧會誒放慢啊，或者係商場誒租任嗰方面都會受到影響咧？咁第三條問題就問翻誒，即係港鐵即係今年都通誒通車都四十週年啦。其實會唔會話有啲咩慶祝活動或者係派發特別股息咧？唔該。阿鄧總可唔可以回答第二個問題先啊？好啊，誒、嗯，關於誒土地供應嗰度咧，其實大家見到每年咧，我哋都會睇住個市場嘅情況啦。咁、嗯、但係我都想強調一點咧，即、就、係、是、港鐵個項目咧，全部都係坐喺誒港鐵設施嘅沿線嘅上蓋，係比較方便，亦都大家過去睇到咧，都較為受香港市民嘅歡迎。咁我都好希望啦，嚇、啊，同我哋合作開嘅發展商都會繼續好撥勇咁參與我哋嘅招標項目啦。關於商場嗰度咧，就亦都同樣地啦。我哋係有好多唔同嘅板塊，我哋有啲商場咧係較高端，例如元芳咧係最近受惠於高鐵嘅開幕啦。另外，我哋有啲比較大型嘅區域性嘅商場咧，都係坐喺一啲主要嘅鐵路中轉站嘅設施嘅上蓋。咁啊，另外亦都有一啲咧係比較係社區性嘅商場。咁如果你綜合嚟睇咧，就都唔會太過大受到大環境經濟影響，而去年嘅成績啱啱啊！我哋總裁都報告過啦，都係有唔錯嘅表現。啊，你睇一個問題，關於沙中線啊，大各位知道沙中線咧，港鐵係依個項目管理人啊，依條啊依、这個項目咧係政府擁有嘅。咁我哋會啊，我哋要按照依個委託協議同政府嘅委託協議處理嘅。咁喺你最後嘅問題，關於四十週年。我再想用呢個機會多謝啊、呃、香港港鐵咁多持份者喺四十週年啦咁大力支持啊、呃、港鐵，去到今日啊港鐵每日喺香港咧有機會服務
五百九十萬人次嘅乘客，依個係港鐵嘅榮幸。咁我想再用呢個機會，啊，港鐵踏入四十週年，再多謝咁多持份者，包括啊在座嘅傳媒朋友，咁多年嘅大力支持，多謝曬。好多謝各位，今日嘅業績報告會咧係已經完結啦，多謝曬。